Okay, good morning, everyone. July 28th. Uh, so before I, I turn off record and let everybody go back to uh, labs three through five in our dashboard in a day Power BI session, um, I wanted to share a few updates I made and things I learned. Um, gonna share my screen. Didn't know there were two syllables in the word screen, did you? Share. Okay. Okay, so the first thing I I wanted to do was use SQL, use our data from SQL Workbench. Remember the good old Northwoods uh, schema um, that we worked with, which is actually hosted at that IP address on Amazon Web Services. Um, but it is just a good old fashioned Unix server running MariaDB. So those credentials work in in uh, Workbench, and they also work in Python. If you were able to to uh, goof around with that notebook that I, I gave you guys, um, so no matter how you connect into that database, same stuff. Um, but getting the client environment, your workstation, your laptop, you know, uh, to cooperate um, requires some administration. So uh, the first thing I did, I wanted to just uh, practice in Power BI. Um, the first thing I did um, was open up Power BI and say, um, get data um, more. Because MariaDB uh, and um, um, MySQL are not listed initially, but there it is, MySQL. And uh, Seth, have you by chance connected to your Postgres data mart with Power BI? I uh, no, I haven't tried. Uh, I'm pretty sure you'll need to download a driver. I'm gonna, I'll try. I, I mean, I'll just click one on one. So, <clears throat> Postgres is just another open source database, just like MySQL or you know Oracle's proprietary. But anyway, Postgres is a one of the top competitors in that in that relational database space and they use those at bumper to bumper they use it at bumper to bumper or rpi i don't know my my son works with this this database at bumper to bumper uh pretty much every day so in order to connect to an external source like everything else you know you very often need some sort of driver or external piece of you know connective software and MySQL to connect to to our sample databases, you know, where I had the Sakila and the Northwind and all of those that I, I sent you guys, um, where you say guest and relational, uh, username, guest, password, relational, remember that one? Um, you can, to connect to that or our Northwoods, Northwind, you know, database that we use for SQL, you got to have an external piece of software. I'm going to click and see if it gives me the... If Postgres gives me the same error message. No, hey, look at that. Uh, I don't know if the software that I used for MySQL worked with Postgres, uh, Seth, or um, or if it's built in to the, to the PC, or maybe it's I downloaded something in my past. But anyway, when I went to connect, get data more... When I went to connect to MySQL, it needed me to download a connector, and it gave me a, a link to learn more and all that. And it was a link to um, actually the MySQL developer support website. And uh, it, it links right to it. You download the connector, and it doesn't work. <laughs> There's something going on with that connector. It broke. If you want to play with our database and Postgres, uh, like I am here, um, you've got to download uh, connector 8.0.16. I think the latest is like 23 or 26 or something like that. And it gives you a connection error. But if you download version uh, 8.0.16, it'll work. I'm not expecting all of you guys to do that. So if you want to... Um, if you, if you want more information on that, 
uh, shoot me an email. But anyway, uh, I had I had to troubleshoot that. But once I got that um, MySQL connector 8.0.16 installed on my machine, um, I was able to connect to uh, our MySQL database. So uh, when I, once I connected, um, it it brought up just like when you open a uh, an Excel file, it brought up all of our tables, um, which are over. Let me get rid of this camera view, um, which I'll show in data view. Uh, our our course table, our uh, course section table. It brought those up just like they were. Uh, individual worksheets in an Excel file. So I clicked them all and said, uh, load and bam, it, it's like it did a select star from table. Um, as automatically I had to give it the, my, my username and password, the IP address and, uh, the default schema in workbench, which is what they call a database, uh, Northwoods. And it, brought it all in just like in power bi just like just like it was excel or whatever so um another thing i learned was that it's not particularly easy to map the self join remember when we looked at a uh, uh, faculty chairperson like the supervisor that parent child relationship within the faculty table it doesn't map that between chair and fid um, I was unable to figure out how to do that, but it's apparently not um, like a couple of mouse clicks in in Power BI. But you'll notice it did import uh, most of the rest of our constraints into the data model, uh, as we say, automagically. Okay, so I thought, all right, cool. Um, that's next level beyond importing a spreadsheet because that's a live database, right? That's, that's something we can, people might, would add, be adding rows to. Um, so then I went over to, at, once I got this going, uh, I went over to the report view and I added just a couple of quick visuals just to get something that I could publish to the Power BI service to, to check out this workflow. So I... Uh, this is a table visualization. You click on table and you can uh, <clears throat> start adding uh, adding columns of st stuff you want to look at and you can filter and whatnot. And that can that, that can be something you put on your visual um, if it if it helps uh, tell your data story. And then just a line chart of just stuff, um, enrollments by course section and course ID. Um, okay, so now i've got a power bi report right and i named it northwoods sample so without touching um uh, the the database as far as modifying um the contents i beg your pardon i published this so i published it and it went up in, and i put it in a, a work space that i created um which is for our course here, um, Northwood sample. So here's our report, but then it also uploaded the data set. Uh, data sets, Northwood sample, just like it did in your um, uh, dashboard in a day exercise. Creates it, it creates a, the accompanying data set um, with your report. Um, so then, uh, Chris, because of your question, I started looking into auto refreshing and whatnot, like like automatically re-executing what Power BI desktop had done, connecting to that database with my username and password to create the data in Power BI desktop that I then manually published uh, to the Power BI service. And that's when it gets, like I said, it gets kind of next level as far as trying to schedule a refresh of that data. Um, I, I I hit the wall, couldn't couldn't figure out 
um, all of the uh, configuration that you needed. There was a there was a a, a, a download that you had to do. There's a, a, a an issue with if the data is on premise, it's got to be called. So anyway, next level, something to work out with your IT team um, and maybe even with a Microsoft architect that can uh, uh, get the team set up at a level um, of, of that next level data engineering. But uh, what I did, once I couldn't figure out how to get it done automatically, I wanted it to, to happen auto magic, like you would think, you know, like an overnight refresh. Um, couldn't figure out how to make that happen. Um, so I went into Workbench and uh, I wanted to see what the workflow looked like just manually, you know, like as a uh, the report author, you know. So I added a record in Workbench. There's a uh, there's a button up here, insert row, insert a new row. So I just clicked on that and I typed in uh, James J. Johnson from Oak Street in Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. So I added that to the database and said apply, which is com which commits the change to the database. Okay, so now I got new data. So what I did was go back to... Um, Power BI desktop and uh, and I hit refresh uh, on this report and it refreshed all the visuals um, and James Johnson popped up. Blocked by failures with other queries. I'm not sure what's going on now. Something timed out. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, that's new. Uh, not sure if I locked the database here. That's a new error. Anyway, I uh, I went in and refreshed the report, and then I republished it to the same name, and it'll ask you, hey, you got a data set with this name. What do you want to do? Um, and I said, replace. Uh, and it said, okay, fine, no problem. And then I went back to the Power BI service and the report um, had not ref reflected the change. Um, James Johnson was not in here. So uh, I started looking around for, oh, there's got to be a refresh, got to be a refresh. Well, there's nothing popping up here immediately, right? It's way over here on the right. Um, refresh visuals. If there's an underlying change in the data set while you're working with um, a, um, a report or a dashboard, you have to re-ping <clears throat> the data, um, and it will and it will redo the dashboard. So. Um, Long story short, it depends when when you're refreshing data. It depends if you're. I beg your pardon, guys. <clears throat> Must be a change in the weather coming. Um, if you're refreshing data, and and you're a Power BI. Um, business intelligence developers, basically what they're, they seem to be calling folks nowadays, Power BI developer. Um, it depends on how you're going to do that refresh. Um, you, you can set up auto refresh at the Power BI service level that would reach out uh, to the same file name, same location, like out on a share drive uh, or out on the internet and, and refresh that data set as long as it, you know, it's the same structure and everything. Um, it, it, it works. Um, you, you can refresh those queries like I did, it just goes out to the database and, and refreshes that select star from everything and brings that back into the database. Or it could be that you as a, an individual report author have the responsibility to 
go into your report, um, you move the same data files in, um, and you're connected to the same database because you can have both, you know, you can mix and match uh, static files and a, a dynamic connection to a database. Um, you, you go into Power BI desktop, uh, refresh that report. You could, you could rename it to the next month and say, this is the, you know, the July report, change things around a little bit. Um, and then, and then refresh the publication up to the Power BI service. So there's multiple ways to go at it at multi, at, at different levels of complexity and, and interoperability. Um, that's, that's what I learned, uh, going through the process over the last couple of days with my, uh, limited visibility. If I had a, a work environment to, uh, goof around with, man, this would be really magic. So, um, so there you go. That's, that's what I learned about refreshing data. It's next level enterprise information systems integration it's not just a simple uh, analyst chore um unless it's a, a file update like i showed you you just you just refresh your report and republish it chris did that help at all or have you talked to anybody on the team about where they're at with the power bi service did you, did you get a chance to talk to wesley by chance Chris, you still with me? I am done. Could you repeat the question one more time? Uh, sure. Did you get a chance to talk to Wesley, or uh, did I did did that demo I just did? Did that help, or did it uh did it further confuse you? No, it helped. It, it kind of gave me a start. Um, uh, I, I want to look into it a little bit more. Um, cause since. Since the last time we spoke, or well, a little bit before the end, we, we have a, a kind of visualization uh, guy that's on the team, and he's kind of helping me with really getting integrated with Power BI because he's went in and created some uh, di dynamic dashboards and um, some that already does the refresh. So it's just a matter of kind of getting with him and figuring out how to set that up because I, I think it's just like you said, you have to kind of get with your data engineer person kind of on the back end and see how it's going to pull in that data, where it's getting it from. And to my understanding, uh, like you alluded to, you can set it up on a specific schedule to like say every day do a data refresh and, and it'll update your dashboards. But that's on the uh, the web service side of it where you kind of set your schedule to my right. understanding. But um, I plan to do a Power BI project for like the main capstone. So by the end, I, I would, you know, definitely kind of figure out that process and I can kind of show it or whatever. But I'm still learning too, so. Cool. Is it? Wesley or Mehmet that's doing that data no, refresh? It's actually a new team member we have. His name is David. Oh. Um, so it's neither of those two. Is is David uh, more advanced than Wesley in Power BI yeah. knowledge? Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think he, he's probably <laughs> the most skilled person on the team when it comes to building the visualizations with Power BI because he came in kind of teaching us the ropes on some of the things. So. All right, cool. But so, hopefully you'll get to meet him soon because he's interested in the program. But um yeah, yeah uh happy to meet anybody on uh, on y'all's team. Are all is is David uh under Mary? Yes. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. Um yeah, like I said, guys, it's uh it's from simple, you know, just refreshing uh your report and then republishing your report as a you know a small scale individual analyst uh, all the way up to an enterprise integration like uh um, like Chris and I were talking about there's multiple ways to go at it and it gets you know uh, from super simple spreadsheet based imports to complex so am I still screen sharing yes uh, so in the classroom the um, Hang on just a second. Let me get that thing. I'm having trouble. There it goes. 
getting rid of that thing. Um, on the classroom, in the classroom. Did I shut that off? I did. Um, hang on just a sec. <laughs> All right. I added a few, some, some information um, to our Power BI section. Um, this link goes to all the official documentation and, and there is, uh, a wealth of information at that link for Power BI from the Power Platform, from re data refreshes to individual report, um, functionality and, uh, everything in between the, the training on Microsoft Learn, um, just a ton of information there for Power BI. So I added that. Um, I didn't point it out, I don't believe, um, but this Fundamentals of Data Visualization is one of the best um, e-books or, you know, kind of an online textbook. Um, it's one of those O'Reilly books with the, <laughs> with the cool animal on the cover, like you see so many of. Um, but what this is, is a, he's an R programmer. He's a statistician. Actually, I think he's a biologist, um, Klaus Wilkie. Um, but he's a fairly widely published author. And he does a lot of uh, co-authoring where he's, he's the diagram guy. Um, so he's pretty experienced with data visualization, certainly more than, um, than average. But this, this link goes to this website. And it's basically the ebook version of his um, fundamentals of data visualization, and um, and it it really is a uh, fundamentals. He goes through and rec recommends types of charts and uh, subtypes of charts and graphs and visualizations for different types of data. So uh, this would be a, a, a good link to to um to keep on your browser uh to help you decide well do i need a scatter diagram for that do i need a line chart for that do i need a bar chart histogram what you know and and he goes into depth into it um so there's a resource for you right there um there's your materials you're all good about that uh data refresh in power bi that link uh goes into Chris what we were talking about the 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 different types of data sources as far as their imports or their their uh real time and how those different um uh, those different refreshes happen because you've got I mean think about it you you if you upload a CSV to your report in that data in that and then publish it to power bi you've now taken a file on your local file system your local pc and turned it into a public uh publicly accessible web asset basically which is going to be different than uh logging credentials into the power bi service so that it can do an auto refresh into a relational database like MySQL or Oracle. So it, there's different ways of going about these different uh, um, uh, refreshes. And you might also be using a published data set, not it, for your report, that's kind of external to above and beyond um, an individual report. Remember those, da those data sets don't necessarily uh, have to be glued to a particular report or dashboard. It becomes a an asset you can use and refresh and use in different reports and everything once it's out there in the Power BI service. So it's it's like I said, it's kind of next level. So that's a uh, I don't know four or five pages on uh, with links into more information uh, for data refreshing in Power BI. Um, and then this link is the one I told you about where uh, the materials 
are there for dashboard in a day, which is the one we're doing. There's another one that uh, if you're going to be working in Power BI, that might be useful called advanced visualizations. Um, and it's got a lab guide and, and a, a sample PBIX file where you can go in and um, uh, it gives you the plain Jane visualization on a page and then the one it wants you to make it look like. <laughs> and then it gives you the steps that you've got to go through to take this uh, very simple default um, visualization and turn it into something maybe with the uh, with better colors or fonts or or uh, titles, labels, uh, access labels, all those sorts of things. Um, so all of those workshops uh, and including that there's a workshop on DAX expressions, which is the uh, the it's not really a programming language. It's really more like a, um, a bunch of functions and and uh, things like that that you use in Power BI in the same place that you would do that sort of thing in Excel. You don't use Excel syntax. You use uh, data analysis expressions, DAX, D-A-X. So there's a, work, there's a workshop in that and uh, several other things. Um, administering the Power, Power BI platform. Uh, that that may Chris that may be helpful um, in a team role. And, that's, and 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 Seth, it sounds like you guys have the Power BI service going there too. So anyway, lots of uh, uh, materials there, and they're they're free. Uh, the attendee stuff it doesn't really ask you anything. The instructor, if you tell it, yeah, sure, I'm an instructor, and I'm going to teach this next month uh, to ten people. It, it, and and then just say don't you know don't email me ever <laughs> and you get the the instructor materials too which the only the only thing extra you, you get with the instructor materials for these workshops is like a demo script um and maybe a powerpoint deck to to be the the lesson to go along with this stuff um the dashboard in a day instructor materials it it, it would it's pretty huge so anyway there we go. That's what I wanted to add today before I let you go and finish up this uh, this lab. Any so the rest of the day, guys, I'm I'm gonna turn off Zoom um, and let you finish uh, lab guides three through five. Any questions, concerns while you have me? We got machine learning in Python coming up on Tuesday. Okay, guys, go at it. Um, I think I want to. I think I want to do. Um, in one of our few remaining class sessions, I think I want to give you some time to actually do a free form. Um a free form project as opposed to doing click by click with um, with lab guides. All right. No questions, no comments. Everybody doing okay? All right, guys. I'll uh I'll let you get back to it. See you on Tuesday morning. See you.